Um, I'm Tamil Malik, principal architect, Malik Architecture. I'm very happy to be associated with AEC World Expo in this current series. Our office is, our practice is about three decades old and as you can see on our very logo it expresses architecture as ecology and spirit. These two words are synonymous with the work of our office. I briefly try to explain these two. Ecology. We have an integrated, holistic approach to design, whereby at the very outset we have a whole group of specialists who begin to work on the design concept at the inception stage itself and we then move into the process of design to achieve complete sustainability. As far as spirit is concerned, and this is a very interesting factor, because now we come to the regional influence. My influence intrinsically comes from my own childhood and background, where I was born in the Himalayas, and my introduction or induction into yoga into understanding the entire process of the inner journey issues of understanding nature comprehensively first on the outside and then you begin to move on to the inside issues of silence of tranquility and these somewhere consciously or unconsciously are manifest in the work of our practice. This diagram actually represents what I just spoke about that you have at the central point, the focal point is the issue of tranquility and serenity and you can see the different pointers the social, functional, physical, metaphysical, climatic, regional, cultural and these are the issues that we that we address prior to arriving at any solution. This particular uh, talk was on interior architecture. To, to be able to understand this, we are essentially an architectural firm, but we also undertake the interiors of our projects primarily. We do other interior jobs. But it's very interesting to find out that these seeming extremities, interior, exterior, bones, skin, surface, depth, these are things that designers, architects from the ancient Greek times to the present postmodernists have relied upon. When you really get to the physiology of bones and skin, it's quite interesting. And you find that you suddenly discover that skin forms the bones. So, this entire theory, which is based on two entities, one being skin and the other being bones, that you have a structure which is bones and then you have a skin which covers it. When you look at these two and you find and you look at the physiology you find that from the conception of the fetus you find the first ball that is formed is the uh, blastomere and from this it continues to fold upon itself and it forms three layers the endoderm, the mesoderm 
and the ectoderm. And you find, interestingly enough, it's the mesoderm that, that forms the bones. So, you, have, you really have an enigma here now. Right? That what you thought were bones is actually skin. And that really is what drives us towards our approach to architecture and interiors. That the two are completely synonymous and without duality. I will now proceed to take you through a few projects where we probably try and demonstrate to you how this philosophy of our practice has been elucidated. The first of the projects is a research center for a very well-known pharmaceutical company called Lupin. The first thing that we do is to first understand the very word research. From my background and my initiation into yoga, I believe that the highest form of thought is when the mind turns inward and is called intuitive. Therefore, we try as far as possible to bring in this so-called metaphysical element into our work. One of the main manifesting, uh, manifestations of, of this is the study of nature. And through nature, obviously, the study of light. If you see the first frame, you will find that the entire center is simply represented by, a, by an earth wall. It's almost as if there's an outpouring of the earth from the hill. And this wall is a terracotta color. You see it in a very dry season when the hills are arid. And when and, and come the monsoons, you find that the entire uh, landscape changes. But then the architecture still, this wall still becomes relevant. It lives with the dry and arid and it lives with the monsoons. The plan of this project was very interestingly conceived from the, or based on, what in India are known as the cosmic mandalas. The, the entire plan is a square with the head of the square being the administration block and the three wings uh, of the square being different parts of the research center. The square, this entire landscape flows south to north and the north part has been kept completely open and with the northeast we have the kund and the water. In short, we've tried to encapsulate the fundamental principles of the mandala, albeit in a very contemporary avatar. The second thing which I would like to uh, speak about is the word time. There's a very interesting statement that uh, one, of the, one of the leading offbeat film directors made to me. He said that we have to work differently if we are not to be prisoners of time. And therefore, what we attempt to do is try not to date our work. I mean, if you see the frame, you, you perhaps, it's very difficult to note at which time it was built. The second thing we do is, we spend a tremendous amount of time on the site. Simply having a site plan and some pictures and working in an office, you somehow are detached from the site. 